I have been asked several times uh, the very reasonable question, how do you reset your game if the player dies? And unfortunately, there's not an easy answer to this, and it's in order to maintain compatibility with the 48K Sinclair Spectrum. Normally, you would just save off a copy of the object table, and then when, the, when you reset, reload the object table. However, since the Spectrum is tape-based, that doesn't really work. So what I've got here is... Um, kind of a, a workaround that will sort of generate the code that you're um, that may be enough to reset your game and you may have to make a few changes but but it should work for you so let's take a look at this empty project right here if you have the latest version of lantern and you look in your function you you should see that there is one here called reset reset is called by kill player so if you ever want to kill the player just call this function and it prints out you have died and then calls the reset function. Now the reset function doesn't have any code in it, but uh, Lantern can generate uh, a rough guess of that for you. Now let's actually open up my space station project here. And this is, n this is an older project and it does not have a reset function by default, so I will add one. And then let me go to my kill player function here and I'll say, oh, I've already done that. Okay, so when I um, kill the player, I print you have died, print a blank line, and then call my reset function to reset the game. Now, let's go reset the game. Let me go find my reset function and I'm going to click on it. Now over here in the code window, I'm going to right click and I'm going to select generate reset code. So if you don't see that stub, that means you, you're, you have an older version of Lantern. So I'm going to select that option, and you'll see that Lantern is going to generate some code for me here. What is all this? Well, the first thing is it tries to put the, it puts the player back in the room where the player started. So the player started in room three, which was the crew quarters. So it put the player back in room three. Then Lantern looped through all the objects, and it said if something was a container. Uh, like an openable or closable, lockable container, it would it'll reset the container back to its original state. So the panel, uh, the panel was openable. So it reset the open flag on that. The jar was openable. So it put the jar, um, oh, and the jar was also portable. So it put the jar back in its starting location and it set its open flag to zero, meaning it put the jar back in the closed state. Uh, that the jar starts in. Um, the white cube, which is the salt, that's portable too, so it put that back in the jar. Uh, now the COM board um, is, was portable, so it put the COM board back where it started, and it also reset the COM board's initial description. Um, it closed the storage locker, it put the spacesuit back in the storage locker, and it re since the, the spacesuit is wearable, it set the uh, the status of the, the worn bit back to zero, saying the suit is not being worn. And uh, the note got put back in the room where the players start. All of its stuff got set. Uh, the slurm can it never actually gets used in this game. I can delete that. So again, this thing is not perfect. Um, it reset the, the Kenmore dr washer dryer and all that. Uh, it also resets all the game variables back to their default uh, states. Now, um, if... There, there are some uh, comments here that suggest what you may need to do that Lantern cannot figure out for you. If you changed room connections during the course of your game, you want to reset your room connections. Um, NPCs, you need to reset those uh, back to wherever they started. And in this game, that's the giant space slug. Space slug. NPCs tend not to be portable, so that is why Lantern did not think to put it back where it was. Um, I mean, it could have said, put every object back where it started, except that if it wasn't portable, it probably never got moved. Uh, and so what we're trying to do is get a balance between writing all the code, you know, more code than we need and just the right amount of code that we need. And we want to err on the side of being small because then it's more likely to fit into your favorite retro computer's memory. So let's put this giant space slug back off screen and I can say, oh, F tab tab and it'll, whoops, uh, it expanded to um, off screen, so we put this the slug off screen. What else? Okay, so the room connections. Um, the room connections are interesting here. Let's look at 
um, airlock one here. And what, let's see, did we customize the you can't go that way message? It does not look like it. However, I think if you try to go west out of the airlock, it should say, you know, the outer airlock door is closed. And so we, we need to reset those um, failure messages. And I'll show you how to do that right now. Now, I actually have an event called no air death. This kills the player. Um, when the uh, if the player goes outside without a spacesuit, and this is basically my reset function right here. So what I'm going to do is um, I'll copy these um, these room connections, and you can see here if you want to have a have a, a direction kind of fail with a specific message, you can use the fail function right that like that. So let's let's grab all that. And I forget what user, th user. oh, the user th uh, three bit is used to determine if there's air somewhere. Uh, so let's go back to my reset function here. So this stuff is specific to this game. I'm, I'm reconnecting the rooms. When the player activates the air or opens the airlock using the button, the room connections change. So I have to change them back uh, to, uh, to the start. Now let's take a look at that user three bit. So if you are messing around with these user one, two, three, four uh, flags, those do not get changed at all. It's up to you to reset those. Now I am using that in this game, user three is being used to determine or to flag whether or not a particular location is has has an atmosphere. So the lunar surface, you could or mean, the checkbox means it's outside, there's no atmosphere. Like if I look at, um, the corridor here, you can see that it's not checked. So that means there is an atmosphere. Now, when the game starts, airlock two is open and there's no atmosphere there, which was why back in this event, airlock two had the, that bit set. Um, let's also grab that look function. There we go. And um, what, or, um, let's go back to the reset function there. And and then also, I guess at the very end, let's call the look function here so that it will print out our new, our new room description. Oh, and then let me, let me put that down here, back with the bit flags. All right, so there's an example of, um, now you will probably not need to do this stuff. So most people do not change the room connections around in their game, um, but I have this thing where, where there's an airlock um, that opens and closes, but the airlock doesn't actually have a door to the outside, so that's why I'm directly changing the room connections here. You will probably not need to do this. Um, and um, that looks that looks good. Okay, so now actually over here in my event, I can get rid of all this. I've got all this. Um, I guess I had some variables for determining if the airlock was open. Did those get reset? Um, let's go find out, actually. Let's, let's look at the reset function. It should have... Oh, it did. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, so it reset all of the, the variables to their default value. Cool. Way to go, Evan. Um, and, yeah, that's exactly what we have here. So now, I don't need this anymore. Boom. Delete it. So if I'm out, I'm just going to call my reset function. Um and that'll reset the game. Oh, you know, I see I made one, one mistake here. I can't, I, I forgot to say dot holder. Here, oops, I wanted to move the um, giant space slugs uh, off screen. Not, I can't set the slug to something else, but I can set its holder. So I just, that was just a typo right there. Giant space slug dot holder equals off screen. That means move the giant space slug off screen. Let's save it and test it. There we go. Okay, so now, let me take the note, go north. I'm going to drop the note. Now I'm just going to try to mess up the state of the world. Open the locker. Take the suit. North. Oops, north. Drop the space suit. Okay. And now let's go west. And now uh, there's the note. If I go west and I push the button to open the airlock, it should kill me and then call the reset function. Boom. You have suffocated. Okay. So... 
it, there it is. We, we suffocated and then it called the reset function, which called the look function. And now it printed out where we were. So let's, let's go see uh, if our world has been reset. So here it is. A note apparently shoved under the door lies on the ground. So that's the note. The note got put back in the um, same place. So let me take the note. Let me go north. Okay, so didn't we drop the note there? The note's not there. Now, we, ha we had put the spacesuit here and opened the locker. But uh, so, this, so you can see there's a storage locker here. Open locker. The locker contains a spacesuit. Uh, take the spacesuit. And then let's examine the spacesuit here. Oh, no, we don't need to do that. But um, So you can see that um, the world has been reset. Am I wearing the spacesuit? Ah, oh, I died again. All right. Uh, that's okay. But hey, the world got reset again. So, <coughs> so that's, that's how, how you can make a reset function. You want to, uh, if you don't have a reset function, make one. If you have a stub for one, just go use that. And then you should be able to just right click on that area uh, and select generate reset code and it'll, it should generate everything for you. Uh, one important observation, though, don't do this until your game is really kind of done because, um, you know, if you did this right at the beginning of the game and then you added more NPCs and objects and stuff then and more variables, then maybe this, this code would be, out, it would be out of date. It wouldn't do everything you needed it to do. But, but there, there you go. That is, um, there at least, that should get you almost, all, not, you know, nine, 99 times out of 100, that should get you everything you need to write a reset function.